In this video, I wanted to show you how you can rework old artwork, old holograph print or any print or anything at all that you're not happy with and just transform it into something completely different. What I wanted to discuss is perhaps not being afraid to getting into something that might lead to nowhere. Don't worry about not ending up with a masterpiece. Just do it if you're enjoying it. Follow your nose. Yesterday I was going to make a video about monoprinting. I haven't done any monoprinting in ages and I really fancied to make, making a video for you guys about that. But I got completely sidetracked with this old pink and black print that I made for a competition. Uh, it was a second in the series. The first one I was happy with. Second one, not so much. It wasn't very interesting. It wasn't really eye-catching. I didn't like it. And yesterday I just couldn't leave it alone. I was looking at it. I was thinking, oh, what, what could I do with it? And I just kept going crazy with it. Really got carried away. Put a, loads of layers here and there. Reworked it. Repainted it. Scraped through. I mean, you will see it's mental. Um, <laughs> but what I have ended up with is something that I like. And that could not always be a case, but it was a case in this situation. And I ended up um, using mixture of painting and collage. And what made this artwork really unique is the fact that you can see bits of holograph poking through, which is very unique for a painting. You can't really get that in a painting alone. So um, sometimes a combination of, of different art media can come up with something really interesting. So I would just say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to get sidetracked. Don't be afraid to waste your time, perhaps, because you might not end up wasting your time. Uh, you might end up doing something you really like. I hope you enjoy the video. I uh, hope you don't think I'm too mad or crazy with how I got carried away with the, carried away with this piece, but I am probably slightly mad and crazy. Uh, but anyway, um, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. So this is the final artwork, and I'll show you in a minute where we started off. Um, he, as you can see, there's bits of holograph poking through in red, and through the orange bit of collage, um, I made out of color. Um, jelly plate print on a tissue paper um so uh, lots of layers there uh and really cool effect i think uh, unexpectedly um but yes um let's jump in and you will see where we started off with so yes this is where it all began uh i didn't quite like it uh it was okay uh, it was unfinished. I was planning to add some more intense pink, but uh, I didn't. So um, what I instead decided to do is I have this sticky paper, uh, which is like a kid's craft paper. And um, what I thought is I need to rethink this, right? I need to do something completely different. I need to obscure some of the bits that I perhaps not crazy about. Um, basically, I got a bit stuck. I thought it's pink, it's black. What can I do with it? Um, wasn't really sure. If one, if you want to see how I made um, this video, here is the link. Um, uh, you can see how the process. The first one of the series, I was quite happy with. I didn't quite film making this one, but basically the process is more or less the same. So um, just not really thinking too much about it. I'm thinking I want to leave some of the pieces uh, showing. So basically what I want to show is, um, is what I'm obscuring. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over this and I'm creating a mask. As you can see, this mask was quite unsuccessful because uh, a lot of paint has seeped through. And uh, this was me being lazy. Basically, you can avoid that by um, painting matte medium over the mask. And that prevents from the paint uh, going through. But basically, um, 
this is going to create a sort of mask for me to um, paint over. And <clears throat> I'm going to paint over it with a contrasting color. Uh, it's going to be a um, muted color, muted color with white. So I looked on the color wheel and the color opposite to a pink is um, sort of turquoise uh, color. Uh, but it will be heavily muted. I'm using um, golden acrylics and this is zinc white and teal. Um, the white is a non-transparent white. Uh, I don't want the colour to be transparent. Um, I want it to be opaque so that's why I went for uh, an opaque colour. I'm just giving it a good mix and I'm going to dirty it a little bit. I don't want it to be too too much of a pure colour. I want to mute it down even more with a tiny bit of black. So after I was happy with the mix, I've just applied it uh, with a colour shaper to the artwork. And I also sort of uh, made some bits kind of showing through a bit. I didn't want it to be a completely solid colour. Um, and just did some mark making with um, a kebab stick, I think it was. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, just to give it a bit more, something a bit more interesting um, and have a bit more texture, I guess. After peeling the sticky paper off, I have to say I wasn't hugely wowed by it. It just didn't work and I didn't, also, the paint seeped through, uh, the whole thing was just, I wasn't hugely impressed and I thought, hmm, what have I done with it? What can I do with it now? Um, so I got the colour shaper and I just decided to sort of, uh, I guess, roughen it up, um, work more paint into it. Um, just do something, I guess, <laughs> um, because it wasn't looking good. Then I still hated it. Uh, it wasn't getting any better, so I just took a bit of rag and I thought, I'm just going to smudge it. I hate the whole thing. Oh boy, what have I done with it? And at that time I was just a bit frustrated. I felt a bit like I destroyed it, I ruined it. What? Why have I done it in the first place? Uh, yeah, not a good point. <laughs> but then as I started sort of wiping away and smudging, uh, it, I, it was getting a little bit better. Uh, I was getting like a sort of, I guess it was creating a contrast, right? I had very definite shapes and I had very saturated colours and I added a muted colour which was very smudgy so it created some kind of contrast so then i thought i will add some jelly plate um collar shapes to it i've got a stack of teal colored uh jelly prints on a tissue paper and i sort of cut out some shapes and i thought well let's see so this is my little hack on adding collage papers to artwork I wet it first uh, it stops it from crinkling it's quite a good way quite a good way of um, solving that problem so anyway here it is I'm just sort of adding I'm using matte media um, um, I'm adding uh, I'm preparing the paper by applying matte medium and then adding the wet uh, collage paper on top and then sort of um, securing it with bit more matte medium on top um, so again uh, kind of not really sure where I'm going with this but I just I got really into it I don't know even though it felt like it was a bit of a disaster I couldn't stop I knew God, I really want to make this monoprint video for you guys but I just could not stop and um, Pull myself away from this disaster. So at this point I thought, hmm, okay, what do I do? Do I do add more shapes? Do I add another colour? What colour should it be? And what struck me is that I needed a warmer colour. 
these all look very sort of cool and I needed to introduce a warm color so I decided to add more shapes more jelly uh, collage prints to this and add another warm color which is close to the teal color in a way so here it is I've added another I've introduced a slightly warmer color but then I thought I need something really bold it's just looking a bit too such a um it, a bit too sort of bland um i thought i'll i'll do like a really warm punchy red color and i thought i'll do a print on top uh because i'm a printmaker and i always like uh messing about with printmaking so i thought i will do my old trick of cling film um so I've got Madder Lake by Intaglio Printmakers Inc. And I'm going to just sort of make it a little bit warmer by introducing um, some Indian yellow, which is quite a warm yellow, um, again, by Intaglio Printmakers Inc. So um, just mixing it up and rolling it out. Um, and um, why do you ask I'm going for the cling film method? Well, I thought I want something th this is looks this all looks quite orderly. Uh, lots of shapes sort of right angled to each other. So I thought the cling film will give it sort of disorder. Um, I wanted to break it up. I thought I'll introduce a warm color. I'll break it all up and see what happens um, at that moment I just followed my kind of uh, ideas uh, rules of composition and seeing what will come out um, I think it's probably a wrong color but um, I soon found out when I printed it okay so um, it's on the press I'm just going to I'm trying to think about where to place it um, it's quite nice. The nice thing about cling film, you can see through it. So it's very good way of trying to sort of judge where you're going to put place um, the ink. At uh, this point, I haven't uh, wetted the paper for printing. It's unnecessary with uh, monoprint. So um, that was quite good because I didn't really want to do that. Okay, so I'm just putting it through the press with some protecting newsprint. Um, at sort of medium uh, tightness and oh, uh, this I love doing this um, peeling off the clink film it's so satisfying it's very very cool so yeah not crazy about this <laughs> I'm still thinking oh this has gone so wrong why have I done that everything seemed just not to work out at this point i almost gave up yeah so um it's i've got some really nice transparencies i've got some nice shapes but it's just not working together okay so then i decided i need some to whack some thick more thick paint on and i went for green gold and white um not really sure why i thought that green worked a little bit i wanted some warmer green at this point i'm adding so many colors now uh, it's just bananas uh, but i quite like the mixture of that green gold with white i think it looks quite delicious so i decided to go for it okay um why not uh, <laughs> um I really did feel like giving up, but something just pulled me to it. I just couldn't stop. Uh, so I thought I'll whack on some thick paint just with a colour shaper. I'm not going to do masking anymore. Um, so, yeah, just sort of working it through um, and seeing what happens. So I was feeling quite hopeful uh, with this new plan. But as I started to apply the paint, I realised that it's not it's not working and i i at this point i'm thinking i really don't know what i'm doing so i've took a, taken a scalpel knife i started to scrape uh getting desperate 
and I'm thinking do you know what I'm just gonna put it all over now it's completely ruined uh, pfft, what else can I possibly do and then I got a roller with still a bit of of that red on it and I don't know what I'm doing I'm just literally t putting it all over now uh, it's completely ruined then I've gone and scraped a little bit more uh, with um, palette knife and uh, and I thought okay it's completely wrecked um, I don't really know where where to go with this and then I decided to come up with, to come up with this genius plan of adding um, some more liquid teal so this is these are golden fluid paints I thought uh, just a few splashes here and there I have no idea what I'm doing uh, this is just awful and <laughs> I've just I'm just working it through so I'm kind of still going with the same colors I I started with um going back in between the two three different colors um but it's um just a one big mess uh, like somebody's been sick there and oh god i don't know what i'm doing there just adding some more cling film action here um yeah it's pretty hideous so i thought uh, I can't possibly do any more damage here um, so I'll just thought I'll, I'll start scraping through so I want to just see some some of the nice bits about the 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 print the maybe a bit of that cling film showing through maybe some color graph so with this palette knife I just decided to start scraping through to see if I can make it into something at least um I've got it so sort of more cohesive I guess at this point um so I thought I'll just reveal um some of the bits that were there in the first place and this is another um golden fluid color it's iridescent bright gold it's a beautiful colour, it's got a lovely sheen, so I'm just adding some warmth with that colour, uh, quite like actually how it works here, um, but again, big fat mess. Okay, so now if you haven't already got bored of my disaster, I have uh, managed to sort of turn it around, I um, thought landscape view was better. So I added some white to the iridescent bright gold uh, to kind of mute it a little bit. And I thought I will add some white. And oh, I like what's going on here. I thought it was nice, these sort of um, lines. And then I turned it around. Back to vertical, back to horizontal. Um, I knew that I liked the horizontal lines. Uh, then um, I just, I guess I just followed, tried to sort of paint over the bits that I wasn't hugely keen on. Um, but I felt at this point it was kind of getting somewhere. Um, it started to get more interesting and I then I thought I'll go for some mark making um, I got a palette knife and I thought I'll do a, a little bit of scraping and mark making apologize about my head getting in the way I got very excited here and uh, forgot I was filming at one point and the camera was above me uh, so here comes a wet wipe uh, to the rescue I thought I wanted some horizontal lines so um, I felt a bit sorry for losing some of the color graph detail and some of the colors um, that were there so I got a wet wipe 
and started to wash away some of the paint and it was still quite wet um, so, it, so it worked quite well I could even retrieve some of the colours quite nicely by just wiping away more and more um, so um, yeah it was sort of starting to take shape at this moment and I felt um, I was gaining some control Okay, as I'm sort of rubbing off a bit more paint, I'm getting some details that I'm starting to like. Um, it's it's actually, wet wipes work really well in this situation. Um, so um, I quite like that sort of misty feel um, and the horizontal lines. I, I At this point, I've decided I'm going to go horizontal here. So this is interesting so I've started to I spent ages looking in my collage box and I found some black and white collages I've made on a jelly plate uh, the one the the stripey one is actually from a newsprint that uh, came off the press when I was making a collagraph in my previous video so I kept it and I cut it out because it showed the same pattern as the collagraph um, poking through a collagraph print poking through above it in the red so I went for sort of repetition but in in a different color um, this I introduced a circle I didn't want to do a circle but I did a cutout of a circle and I wanted to introduce a circle because there is no sort of circles anywhere here I wanted to do something different um, black and white that very strong black color is a excellent contrast here so this is why i think it works well and that orange is again it was um i i think i, I basically cleaned a roll and a bit of tissue and kept it and what i like about it is i wanted a really big shape what was lacking in this composition it was something big uh, to draw your attention to um, I didn't have a big big shape so I um, chose this color uh, this um, jelly col jelly plate collage uh, because it's sort of see-through so it would give me a nice delicate suggestion of what's underneath um, so it's not a solid shape um, but it, it is a big shape something to give my uh, composition that kind of um, what, what's lacking basically um, so there's another method to stop crinkling the 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 circular shape was giving me some wrinkles and I used a, a parchment paper to smooth it out over and that's another little hack you can use to get rid of crinkles um, so as you see once I'm gluing uh, with medium the collage paper I'm getting more transparency here and I really really like that because not only the actual colour on the collage paper uh, is semi-transparent because the ink was but also because it's on a tissue paper it's giving me showing me what's uh, underneath um, and again here I'm just smoothing out the wrinkles using um, baking paper basically uh, you have to be careful um, because it can stick as well so you have to do it quickly before it dries yeah, as you can see it's starting to stick already but it works really well I couldn't be bothered to do the whole wetting thing because my little water bath wasn't big enough so I used this method to get rid of uh, wrinkles on the paper um, so yeah, I, I'm start. I'm feeling this composition is starting to get there. Um, at this, I'm, I'm happy. I'm a lot more happy with it, and I'm starting to get excited. So I'm just speeding through, uh, attaching the rest of uh, my collages. Look at the mess of my table. I literally raided the entire collage box for this I couldn't decide for ages if I 
fill in my process of trying to decide which collage, this video would be hours long. Uh, so don't think that I've just whipped out a couple of collage papers and I knew straight away. It took me ages to find out what I think will work. So this is turning into a landscape uh, with sunshine or moon at the top and fields or something. Uh, I'm used to be a landscape artist predominantly, so I keep going back to landscape. I just can't help it. So, um, yeah, after much deliberation, should I do something else to this? I decided to just a couple of final touches with this um, white marker pen. Um, it's like a, a sort of crayony type of pencil. It's really good because you can draw um, draw over acrylics. Um, so yeah, I wanted to have some more intentional, smooth shapes um, to contrast with the rest of the composition. And this is I f this is the way I felt it, this could be achieved. Um, yeah, could have done without it, but I just wanted something else and other and a different interest point in in the composition. So just to make it more landscape, it's kind of suggestion of tree, I guess. So here's the final piece. You can see it a bit better. The lighting was quite dodgy in a studio. It's getting dark very early. It's difficult to keep up with the very early sunset. I was rather pleased with the final piece. It also landed in, a, uh, almost landed in a bin. And, but I really hope that uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, didn't bore you with my crazy layers. And thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you again soon. Bye for now.